everyone and welcome to our session. In today's session, we're going to be talking about LIDAR processing in ArcGIS Pro and how we can use it to create digital elevation models, which are used in various applications. My name is Maria Mukwena, and I am a geospatial consultant within the data department at ESU South Africa. My role involves processing of geospatial data, including LIDAR, which is used to create geospatial solutions. I also focus on creating digital twins to better model and understand the real world. In today's session, we're going to be talking about what is LIDAR. We're going to talk about the different digital elevation models. I will then outline our problem statement. I will also take you through a live demo, which will showcase how we can solve our problem. And lastly, I will take you through some key takeaways. LIDAR is an acronym for Light Detection and Ranging. This is a remote sensing technique that uses laser light to sample the Earth's surface and produce accurate X, Y, and Z measurements. Certain components are required when capturing LIDAR data. This includes the collection vehicle, the laser scanner, and the GPS for positioning. This technique produces a mass point cloud which can be visualized, analyzed, and shared in ArcGIS Pro. This can also be used to create digital elevation models such as DTM and DSM. Digital elevation model, also referred to as a DEM, is the simplest digital representation of topography in a particular area. DEMs are used for infrastructural management, hydrological studies, and land use planning. There's two types of digital elevation models. Let's have a look at them. Firstly, we have the digital terrain model, sometimes referred to as the DTM. This represents the background. Secondly, we have the digital surface model. This represents buildings and trees and everything that has height above ground. Various applications require DEMs, and this includes DTM, which are required for flood or drainage modeling. They are also used for land use studies and geological applications. We also use DSMs for landscape modeling and city modeling because they have information about buildings and trees. We can also use DEMs to determine elevation at any given point. We can also use them to extract contour lines, slope, or aspect. One may ask, how can we create these products? Well, in this session, I will show you how you can create this product using LIDAR. LIDAR data is stored using less files. These come in various versions from 1.0 to 1.4, which are all supported in ArcGIS Pro. In order to use a LIDAR data in ArcGIS Pro, you would need to create a less data set. This is a standalone file that resides in a folder. It references your LIDAR data and create a single data set. LIDAR data needs to be classified using the ASPRS standards, which assign a classification code to every point in the data which matches the feature it represents on the ground. This is a classified less data set. The brown points represent ground, the red points represent building, the different shades of green represent vegetation. The yellow points represent power lines, and the blue points represent transmission towers. A less data set can also be used to create other features. This includes DTM and DSM. It can also be used to extract building footprints. We can also use it to create 3D building multi-patches. We can also use them to create power lines or estimate forest canopy density and height. This is a digital twin that was created around the Ezri South Africa building. It shows the Ezri building together with the parking lots, the trees that are growing in the area, and we can see the paths and the roads in the area. Digital twins can be used for planning or proposing new developments in an area. So far, we have been looking at what is LIDAR and what we can extract from LIDAR. I am now going to take you through a live demo in ArcGIS Pro. Firstly, you will need to open the ArcGIS Pro desktop application that has been installed in your machine. 
This is the ArcGIS Pro interface. Firstly, to create a project in ArcGIS Pro, you would need to click on New Map, then you would give your project a name. But for this demo, we already have the LiDAR demo project that we're going to be using. So I'm going to open the LiDAR demo project. This is the ArcGIS Pro interface. We have the ribbon on top, we have the contents pane on the left, the catalog pane on the right, and the map 2D view in the center. In order to analyze less data set in ArcGIS Pro, we will need to use the less tools which are part of the 3D analyst extension in ArcGIS Pro. To access the tools, we would go to the ribbon, click analysis, then we'll click tools, then the geoprocessing pane will open up. We will then use this to find the tool that we want to use. Firstly, we're going to create a less data set. So we're going to search for create less data set. In order to use the create less data set tool, you will click on it to open it. You will then input the less files which will create the less data set. You will then navigate to where the data is being stored on your machine. The data is currently stored under LiDAR demo data. You will then click the folder to open it. You will then select all of the less files that you're going to use for your less data set. Once you've added your less data set, you would need to specify the output less data set name. I am going to give this less data set the name LiDAR demo. For this data, we're going to be using the HTBS Hook LO29. We will then click Run to run the tool. And we can now see the results, which is a less data set. The less data set can be visualized using elevation, where blue points represent points of lower elevation and red points represent places of high elevation. We can also visualize a less data set using class. We will go to appearance, go to symbology, then visualize the data set using class. We can see that this less data set has not been classified. Hence, we're seeing one class which is unclassified and it's gray. In order to classify a less data set, we will go to the classification tab then we will use automated classification. We'll then click down and classify ground. This tool will classify all the points that represent ground. We're going to use the default parameters and then we'll click run. The tool has now completed running and we can see all the points that are classified as ground. Secondly, we're going to classify buildings. We will go to the classification tab, click automated classification, then we'll classify buildings. This tool classify all the points that represent buildings. We're going to be using the default parameters and then we'll click run. The tool has now completed running and we can see all the points that represent buildings. And lastly, we're going to classify vegetation. We're going to go to the classification tab, go to automated classification. We will then use the classify by height tool to classify all the points that represent vegetation. We're going to use the default parameters, then we'll click run. The tool has now completed running and we can see all the points that are classified as vegetation. The different shades of green represent the different heights of vegetation. Now that we've classified our less data set, we can then use it to extract some products. Firstly, we're going to create the digital terrain model. In order to create a digital terrain model, we will go to the appearance tab. We will then use the less filter to select all the points that represent ground. We're then going to go to the data tab and then we're going to export this as a raster. 
we will then need to input the output raster name. We're going to call this a DTM. We will also need to specify the sampling value, which is the point spacing of the point cloud. And for this data set at 0 0.5, we will then click run to run the tool. The tool has completed running and we can see the digital terrain model which represents the background. Secondly, we're going to create the DSM. In order to create the DSM, we'll go back to the point cloud. We will then go to appearance, use the less filter to select all the points and the last return of all the points. We will then go to the data tab, go to export, export as raster. We will then specify the output raster name as DSM. We will also need to specify the sampling value, which is the point spacing of the point cloud and at 0.5. We will then run the tool. The tool has now completed running and we can see information about buildings and some of the vegetation. We have used a point cloud to create a DTM and a DSM, which can be used in various applications across various fields. The demo was showcasing how we can create various digital elevation models which are used in various applications. I am now going to take you through some key takeaways from our session. LiDAR is a cost-effective technique as compared to photogrammetry that can be used to create digital elevation model. It also produces accurate DEMs which are used in various applications. And LiDAR can also be used to create digital twins which help us to better model and understand the real world. For more information, please contact data at esri-sourafrica.com.